The Secret of the Rosary, Part 21. Part 2. How to Recite It. 41st Rose, Purity of Intention. It is not so much the length of a prayer, but the fervor with which it is said that pleases Almighty God and touches his heart. One single Hail Mary that is said properly is worth more than 150 that are said badly said. Most Catholics say the rosary, the whole 15 mysteries, or five of them at any way, or at least a few decades. So why is it then that so few of them give up their sins and go forward in the spiritual life? Surely it must be because they are not saying them as they should. It is a good thing to think over how we should pray if we really want to please God and become more holy. To say the Holy Rosary to advantage, one must be in a state of grace, or at least, or at the very least, be fully determined to give up mortal sin. This we know because all our theology teaches us that good works and prayers are only dead works if they are done in a state of mortal sin. Therefore, they can neither be pleasing to God nor help us to gain eternal life. This is why Ecclesiastes says, Praise is not seemly in the mouth of sinners. Praise of God and the salutation of the angel and the very prayer of Jesus Christ are not pleasing to God when they are said by unrepentant sinners. Our Lord said, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. It is as though he were saying, Those who join my confraternity and say their rosary every day, even perhaps the fifteen decades, but without being sorry for their sins, offer me lip service only, and their hearts are far from me. I have just said that to say the rosary to advantage, one must be in a state of grace, or at least be fully determined to give up mortal sin. First of all, because if it were true that God only heard the prayers of those in a state of grace, it would follow that the people in a state of mortal sin should not pray at all. This is an erroneous teaching, which has been condemned by Holy Mother Church. Because, of course, sinners need to pray far more than good people do. Were this horrible doctrine true, it would then be useless and futile to tell a sinner to pray at all, or even say part of his rosary, because it would never help him. Secondly, because if they join one of Our Lady's confraternities and recite the rosary, or some other prayer, but without having the slightest intention of giving up sin, they join the rank of her false devotees. These presumptuous and impenitent devotees, hiding under her mantle, wearing the scapular and with rosary in hand, cry out, Blessed Virgin, Good Mother, Hail Mary. And yet at the same time, by their sins, they are crucifying our Lord Jesus Christ and tearing his flesh anew. It is a great tragedy but from the very ranks of Our Lady's most holy confraternities, souls are falling into the fires of hell. We earnestly beg everyone to say the Holy Rosary, the just that they may persevere and grow in God's grace, the sinners that they may arise from their sins. But God forbid that we should ever encourage a sinner to think that Our Lady will protect him with her mantle if he continues to love sin. For then it will only turn into a mantle of damnation, which will hide his sins from the public eye. The rosary, which is a cure for all our ills, would then be turned into a deadly poison. A corruption of what is best is worst. The learned Cardinal Hughes says, One should really be as pure as an angel to approach the Blessed Virgin and to say the angelic salutation. One day, Our Lady appeared to an immoral man who used to always say his rosary every day. She showed him a bowl of beautiful fruit, but the bowl itself was covered with filth. 
The man was horrified to see this, and Our Lady said, This is the way you are honoring me. You are giving me beautiful roses in a filthy bowl. Do you think I can accept presents of this kind? 42nd Rose With Attention In order to pray well, it is not enough to give expression to our petitions by means of that most excellent of all prayers, the Rosary. But we must also pray with real concentration, for God listens more to the voice of the heart than that of the mouth. To be guilty of willful distractions during prayer would show a great lack of respect and reverence, it would make our rosaries fruitless, and would make us guilty of sin. How can we expect God to listen to us if we ourselves do not pay attention to what we are saying? How can we expect Him to be pleased if while in the presence of His tremendous majesty we give in to, dis we give in to distractions just as children run after butterflies? People who do this forfeit Almighty God's blessings, which are then changed into curses because they have been praying disrespectfully. Cursed be he that doth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Of course, you cannot possibly say your rosary without having a few involuntary distractions, and it is hard to say even one Hail Mary without your imagination troubling you a little for our imagination is, alas, never still. The one thing you can do, however, is to say your rosary without giving in to distractions, deliberately, and you can take all sorts of precautions to lessen involuntary distractions and to control your imagination. With this in mind, put yourself in the presence of God and imagine that Almighty God and His Blessed Mother are watching you and that your guardian angel is standing at your right hand, taking your Hail Marys, if they are well said, and using them like roses to make crowns for Jesus and Mary. But remember that at your left hand lurks the devil, ready to pounce upon every Hail Mary that comes his way and to write it down in his deadly notebook. And be sure that he will snatch every single one of your Hail Marys that you have not said attentively, devoutly, and with reverence. Above all, do not forget to offer up your decade in honor of one of the mysteries, and while you are saying it, try to form a picture in your mind of Jesus and Mary in connection with this mystery. The life of Blessed Herman tells us that at one time, when he used to say the rosary attentively and devoutly while meditating upon the mysteries, Our Lady used to appear to him resplendent in breathtaking majesty and beauty. But as time went on, his fervor cooled, and he fell into the way of saying his rosary hurriedly and without giving it his full attention. Then one day Our Lady appeared to him again, only this time she was far from beautiful, and her face was furrowed and drawn with sadness. Blessed Herman was appalled at the change in her, and then Our Lady explained, This is how I look to you, Herman, because in your soul this is how you are treating me. As a woman to be despised and of no importance, why do you no longer greet me with respect and attention, meditating on my mysteries and praising my privileges? <laughs>